Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Big Bros Podcast. We are recording from Jeremy's basement, where it the temperature is comparable <laughs> to Siberia in December. I mean, no one can see on the footage, but we've got my um, heater sitting right behind the camera here, and it is blasting, and we're still not warm enough, are we? <laughs> yeah, no, it's all right. It's character building. Hopefully, we can warm up from this chat, because I feel like this might be a bit of a spicy chat today, Ooh, hey? Yes, a little bit spicy. We're going to be speaking about why casual relationships are destined to always fail. Always. There's no to an extent well, like they're not. Well, least. generally, nothing, there's always outliers or exceptions that disprove the rule, but we speak in stereotypes, we speak in 95% confidence intervals, we speak in a lot of jargon, but generally speaking, they don't work. And my contention, at least, and let's see if you agree with me, is that one party is always destined to get feelings for the other party, even if both parties agreed at the start that it will be no strings attached. Yeah, well, when I think about casual relationship, I think of what we often hear about now and that being the term coined as a situationship. It's a very popular one we hear about in the modern dating world because it seems like every person has or is in a situationship at any given point in time. And at times it's almost glorified to, to be in a situationship, you know, because you're, you're getting that experience of a relationship, but you don't have that maybe loyalty or commitment to that person, which some people think is, is great. And um, I think that comes with a lot of danger and caution because, you know, if you've been in one yourself, you will know that it probably didn't end up being what you might have thought it was or would have been. It's not all fun and games. It's not all rainbows, butterflies, intimacy, dating, happiness. There's a lot of confusion and there can be a lot of emotional breakdown as well. Well, when I think of casual relationships, I think of the whole adage of friends with benefits. Yeah, it, well, similar thing, hey? Well, things, well i got to ask you, with situationships, aren't they more, I guess, an elevated step? So, And it's not so much yeah. a relationship, but it's not so casual that it's like friends with benefits. Because when I think of casual relationships, I'm thinking purely of you meet up with someone purely for the sake of having sex with them and nothing else. Well, I guess that would be, you're saying that's like a friends with benefits relationship? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Because I think, I mean, look, everyone is different to a certain extent in terms of like whether they would become attached to the other person um, after having sex with them. But realistically speaking, when you're engaging in a sexual act with someone, you're engaging in something that's intrinsically and biologically a very emotional act. You've got oxytocin that's released. That's going to make you want to be around that person afterwards. So to say that, you know, it's almost like a foolproof method to not get attached to that person, especially if you're not in a mindset where you want to be in a relationship currently at your point in life, you set yourself up almost for failure and you set yourself up for a really difficult conversation at some point, especially if you're the person who doesn't want anything, especially if all you want is sex out of that situation. So I think more times than not, you're going to end up in a very difficult situation and trying to have a really complicated discussion. Yeah, I think that's the crux of it. I think when it comes to a casual relationship, so this isn't friends with benefits. We're talking in this scenario specifically about something more elevated, like you said, a scenario where there's actually dating involved. There's maybe time investment into one another, but you're not putting a label on each other. You're not being wholeheartedly clear with your communication. And I think that's what a situationship is by definition is It's a breakdown of communication. Somewhere along those lines, you have not communicated truly what you actually feel or you've communicated, but it's not to maybe the level that you are receiving communication from the other person or you're not communicating whatsoever. So there's a breakdown of communication along the way some somewhere and I mean the way I think of it in my brain is you know being a physiotherapist and working with the body when you've got like 
a nerve impingement, for example, because your nerves control, you know, how certain muscles in muscles in your body work, how your back works. So when that nerve has been slightly twinged in a certain area, that causes pain and a breakdown in another area of the body and affects you wholeheartedly. And um, I think that's a very similar analogy to this situation that somewhere along the lines of you talking to this person or dating this person, there's been a breakdown of that communication, which causes something a little bit more dangerous and could potentially erupt into something bigger. Potentially. And I think also another aspect of it is as well is that casual relationships offer a benefit with not much commitment. So you can get and extract extract something that might be mutually beneficial, but at the same time, there's not much investment placed into it. There's no investment of commitment. There's no investment of loyalty, as you said. So it is a very interesting dynamic and it's quite a new thing because 50, 60 years ago, you think casual relationships were a thing. No, nah, people not. met probably their first loves, their first kisses at you know, 15, 16, got married at 18, had kids at 19, 20. Now, I'm not prescribing for one second that we go back to that era, but what I am saying is that our dating dynamics have almost revolutionized in such a way that I think in modern society, we as young people are very confused about how to navigate this plane because, I mean, you and I were speaking off air about the fact that like, if you don't want something casual, you... Sorry, serious, you mean? Yeah, well... If you do want something serious, but you don't want something casual and you're on a first date, it's like a first date's really appropriate for you to actually outline your intentions. I think they are to a certain degree. Maybe you don't say like, oh, well, if this date goes well, then you're going to go into my dating prospects as a future, you know, long-term partner, but more specifically intentions around what you see yourself as in the next five, 10 years in terms of the dating landscape. Are you looking for someone for something quite serious? Are you there to just have fun? And I think those are actually all important things you should probably clarify on a first date, just not to waste each other's time. But I want to ask you, because you've been in casual situationships before, and I'm sure they're fun, and I'm sure that there is some some benefit you accrue, but over the long term, is it more harm than good? Yeah, well, I think when I speak of personal experience, yeah, like I've, there's been time in my life where I've been in casual flings and um you know one comes to mind in particular and I learned a lot about myself in that time period because I feel like I was essentially not being my wholeheartedly authentic self I feel like as a person generally I'm a very gentle sensitive at times person not afraid to let my guard down let my walls down um quite bubbly you know I feel like that's 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 more likely what I am versus someone that is stoic tough exterior um, a little bit more treat them mean keep them keen I feel like I tend to be more on the softer scale versus that and when I think back to this one time period where you know I was seeing someone for an extended period of time but it was casual there wasn't like you know that commitment attached to it um i probably was putting on a bit more of a like a a hard tougher exterior i probably wasn't being as soft and as gentle as i normally am and i think because you know at the time that wasn't being well received like i don't think it was being seen as like attractive like that you know, that vulnerable, softer side to me, like that wasn't attractive. Rather, what I felt was attracting the person was like a bit more of that like treat a mean, keep them keen type mentality, hard exterior, competitive nature. Like that was like giving them the attraction I felt. And therefore, like I felt like my walls went up and, you know, you, you're you're seeing you're seeing results from that. You're seeing like, a situation where the person is enjoying that company being around them. So what do you do? You continue being that for them because you can see that they're enjoying themselves. But, you know, at the end of the day, you can only go on for so long like that until you realize that that's not who you are and you shouldn't change who you are for someone because 
it's not worth it at the end of the day because it will reach a point where a tough discussion will be had and you know people are going to get hurt and that's not fun so do you think relationship jeremy was having a difficult time getting into the mindset of casual relationship jeremy absolutely i think that was um for me personally the probably the toughest transition i faced in where like you know i was in a relationship where i was like that lover boy energy giving that lover boy energy i felt a lot and um when i came out of that i felt like my walls did go up so then when you start casually dating again um because your walls are up that's the type of characteristic and personality you're now giving out to someone is that that walled up type of persona of you even though you know that you're not that deep down so you know i was giving that at that at that time and um it, it reached a point where i just couldn't give that anymore and um it was simple as that i think you just um, you you realize what you are at the core, and you have to have a conversation with that person and be like, I can't do this anymore. Um, it's just not going to work out for me. And um, that's what it was. It was it was it was me coming to that person and and just saying that like, you know, whilst I think you're an awesome person and you know we we're clearly getting along great and we get along great, the fact that you know we both know that this is casual and it's not going further and it's not going to go further um it'll it'll take one of us to actually either say we want to take it further or say that we don't want to take it further and that's the road block that you will reach in a casual relationship at the end of the day it's um because it has been maybe that breakdown of intention someone will reach the point of either wanting to take it further or needing to actually get rid of it because they've realized this isn't for them and being casual is not achieving anything other than a convoluted mind and a a heart that doesn't feel authentic to your true self and what i find really fascinating about it is let's say there's one party that does develop feelings yeah they will not communicate that because the thing about casual relationships it are at least from my perspective is that they won't ever tap into vulnerability they'll maintain that hard exterior shell because anything more than that and you run the risk of actually wanting to connect with that person on a deeper emotional level beyond any form of just you know um beyond any form of casual sex right Mm. because as soon as you start opening up who you are as a person what your values are and you really start connecting with that person and you do remove those barriers you're going to end up connecting with them naturally that's just the human inclination but i do find it fascinating however that you'll see people who won't want to communicate those feelings to the other person they'll make it out as if you know that this stoic individual even for girls as well right like one party might have these feelings they won't say anything and then that conversation will come where you know <clears throat> someone will ask actually okay we've you know we've slept with each other quite a few times so where is this going one party will say well you know that's all it is like i don't really see it going any further and that's usually where the waterfalls begin the person starts crying they become emotional because they're like they realize that they entered something where in the back of their mind they thought it was going to be purely casual but a couple months later across this situation ship they've realized they've developed feelings for this person now they have to confront that well look feelings change along the way and like you you can enter you know you might enter casual dating at the start when it is the start and think okay it is the start so i am you know not in any risk of anything because it's the start and it's early but you know one date turns into two two might turn into three and so on so forth and it's just a matter of if you keep delaying conversation about communication of how you feel you're just digging yourself a a bigger hole because yeah like you said feelings will eventually develop if you keep seeing someone for x amount of time i feel like it's rare if feelings don't develop and you can tell yourself in your mind that that you're, you're not getting any sort of feelings for this person but let's be real if you're putting time effort money energy into seeing someone consistently in the busy lives that we live where we're all busy day in day out every week if you're making that effort to see that person a fair amount of times 
there is something there. Like you are not seeing that person without any feeling whatsoever. You, even if it's as simple as just really enjoying their company, that's feelings. Like you enjoy their company. You enjoy being around that person. No, that's not feelings. Well, I, I think it is feelings to some extent. Why would you why would you continue to hang around someone if you're not enjoying their company? I enjoy your company, but it doesn't mean I want you, you know, I don't care if you go sleep with someone else in a in a casual relationship context. Well, we're heterosexual, so it's a bit But different. it doesn't oh, yes, of course, but the point when I think of feelings though, I think of, you know, there's there's something more that person longs for. They long for the exclusivity of that person. Mm. They don't long for just being with them. They want to know that, you know, that person might be looking, to, you know, they like them as much as you, that they, as much as they like you and they want something more long-term. So I think that's quite important as well, no? Yeah, uh, of course. And I think that's why it, it's just, again, it's a breakdown of communication because one party probably is looking for something serious and, and either has their walls up or is too afraid to communicate with that person because they might see that, you know, what they what they have at the moment is good and is working and they're afraid to front up about what's actually what's actually in their minds. So knowing what you know about situationships and casual dating, what happens in a scenario where you do have like as transparent of a conversation as can possibly be without it becoming awkward, saying like, you know, I'm happy for this to just be a friends with benefits situation. And there's almost like a mutual agreement that nothing more is going to emerge. Should you enter that or would you enter something like that going forward? Me personally, well, me personally, I've never been in a friends with benefits situation and I don't plan on it because I know that that's not me as a person. Um, Have I had like casual relationships or, you know, things with people for, you know, a, a time period that was casual and didn't go further. Yes. So I can speak to that, which I have been. Sorry um, to interrupt you. Yeah. Did you know, did you rule out from day dot when you started seeing these people that they're not going to be long-term like partner material? W- wait, rephrase that. So when you started going on dates with these people, were you open-minded for to the fact that it might actually progress into something more or in the back of your mind, were you already conscious that like, I'm happy for this just to be casual dating. I don't want it to go into anything more. No, look, honestly, for the ones that, you know, the 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 couple that come to mind where they they did end up being like casual, we were both open that we knew it wasn't going to be a long-term thing. Like we both expressed to each other pretty early on that, you know, we don't see this being like a long-term thing because of different values, but we just enjoyed being around each other and and you know, we brought good company out of one another and it was fun and we were enjoying ourselves. So um, from that perspective, the communication was actually honest in terms of what we wanted long term. But can I be honest? It sounds a lot like friends with benefits. Not at all, because it wasn't a situation where you're sleeping with them because it, it, it wasn't that, you know, it's 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 fr- friends with benefits i feel like is you're purely just like sleeping with the person and i've never been in that situation and i feel like if you're actually making an effort to like see that person during the day and you're doing cute things during the day and you know you're talking quite regularly that's more than that that's an elevator type of relationship that's not friends with benefits agree to disagree <laughs> How do you disagree on that? Because you're still you, you friends. You even said it yourself at the start. You said at the start that casual relationship is an elevated version of friends with benefits. I think I meant more situationships because when I look at situationships, I think of a situation where quite literally one person is hoping for something more to eventuate, whereas the other person is quite happy for it to just remain maybe you know, they're still sussing out. They're not sure if they're going to be a long-term partner. Mm. Casual for me is the same thing as friends with benefits. And the reason I say that is because, and maybe I'm contradicting, so I'm going to endorse what I'm saying now. I think that when you are in any sort of casual relationship, there is an agreement from both parties that this is purely going to be, there's going to either be an expiry date Mm -hmm. or we're only seeing each other for sexual purposes. Okay, so now- So, hold on. By using that logic, how is that any different to two friends hanging out 
and then all the and sure they might go on cute little dates and might get Macca's drive through or whatever but at the end of the day they're still sleeping with each other that sounds awfully a lot like friends with benefits and even even if our debate is around actually like what you would label it I don't actually think it makes a difference because you're still doing the same things that a friends with benefits couple would be doing. I agree. Okay. I, yeah, I agree with that. I don't think the, the label matters. I sure. think at the end of the day, it's it's what you're doing and it's what you're communicating that matters. So I think you're saying here is that like a situationship is different because one party actually might want to pursue something further but isn't communicating that or they're not. Uh, yeah, it's like a good example is let's say you start seeing a person and, you know, you're not closed off to dating them long term and they're not either. And maybe it's been a few weeks and you're seeing them and you're liking where it's going, but you don't want to rush anything. But they, they might be rushing some stuff. Maybe they want to lock you down as a partner and you're just unsure of what, you know, the trajectory of the relationship. You've got doubts, but you're also not completely closed off to dating them long term. I would argue that's more of a situation ship than anything else because there's confusion involved. Yeah. For that one person, they might be thinking, well, do they want to date me long term or do they not? Is it worth continuing going on all these dates? Which brings in another question. I want to get your thoughts on this. If someone wants to get sexual experience and they don't want to be in a relationship, they don't want to be tied down, they don't have time for one, what should they, what should they do? Yeah, well, that's that's the age-old question and why it's 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 tough for a lot of people to be single, right? Because, you know, the argument that a lot of people have is that being single is actually harder than being in a relationship because it can be a lot more, a lot more tricky to navigate certain things. And why is it tricky? It's tricky because people don't actually communicate what they truly want. That's 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 the tricky part for people is that they actually can't communicate what their true intentions are. When it comes to like sexual experience like that, I feel like you really have to be on the same page as that person and be very open about it pretty much from the from the get-go i would say it's one where you know you're obviously getting intimate you're building a connection pretty fast and whilst it might be deep and meaningful for some it might be pretty transactional for other people as well um guys and girls i feel like there's not a one-size-fits-all so Look, as boring as it is, I don't know if there's a definitive answer for that question because I feel like every situation is different depending on the person and it is dependent on how you communicate with that person. And if you communicate with that person pretty openly from the get-go, you really should not land up in hot water. If you are very much honest and authentic, that person will see that and your body language and your the way you talk to them and you know the way you act around them and away from them like that'll that'll be seen and it's very hard to fake authenticity and the ones that that do they eventually get found out for being cold manipulators i think it's i think it's very clear cut i think it's also hard for someone when someone might communicate that they're looking at something as purely a casual thing but their actions and their behaviors signal that of someone who is quite as you would say maybe a lover boy someone who's quite intimate and quite kind and a bit of those characteristics you'd see in a boyfriend girlfriend situation so i think that can create a lot of confusion for people as well because what you say can be very different to how you behave. Mm. So knowing that if you're you've if you've landed yourself in a casual relationship where one party is they said from the outset like you know I look at you know they they, they speak to you and they say this is not going to eventuate into anything more. My advice would be just to take them at their face value because their behavior might be very like quite lovey-dovey and so forth but you have to understand at the same time, you've got to ask the why. Why are they being lovey-dovey? Well, they said to you at the start, all they want from you is just, you know, the physical aspect. So they're probably just using that to try and get into your pants. And I know you might disagree with me on that point, but that's why a lot of people, I think especially girls might get quite upset, especially when they're confronted with that conversation, which is like, I know you said that we're, we were only going to be casual, but you know, your actions and behaviors, you know, you were so kind to me. You were so generous. You were like treating me as if I was your girlfriend. And now you're expecting me to, you know, be, not be upset at you. That's why my advice is if you've entered that situation and that's fine. Like everyone does what they want. Just my, 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 just be prompted and be 
you know, take a lot of value in what they say at the start because that's what they're going to rely upon when you end up in a hot discussion with them. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that because that's that's what I said before. Like, it's it's hard to fake authenticity and, and words are one thing, but actions are another thing. So if your actions don't stick to what your words say, then you're, you're going to land up in that hot water. So I think the best piece of advice I can give is to just, be an authentic motherfucker and don't be scared to communicate because that is the downfall, I think, of our generation when it comes to modern dating. Like, I don't think our parents experienced this to the extent that, you know, us in this generation are experiencing this. I think we are just so scared to communicate what we truly want and how we truly feel with people because of that potential fear of rejection, because of maybe what we've experienced in past relationships fear of being abandoned, fear of being hurt, that we would rather refrain from those tough conversations. So I urge and encourage people to to have those from the get-go. And I don't think it's scary to have. And if it's scary to to hear that and to receive that, then that person is clearly not for you, whether it's for a, a casual means or whether it's for a, a long-term type of relationship means yeah it's uh, i get you and i think also like you got to look at your own attachment type as well if you're someone who's insecurely attached and you're entering a casual relationship you should know yourself better than anyone that you are going to be at increased odds of developing feelings for this person especially if you know that person's not right for you Mm. so it's one of those things where you end up in a situation where you're asking yourself is it better to just be single and just not enter any experience where I might have, you know, the potential of, you know, falling in love with someone, but also at the same time being like, I'm only going to reserve that for someone who I see as long-term dating material. And I think that's the advice I'd give to anyone because you're right. Like everyone's different. Some people might not get attached at all, but most people will because we're humans and the human inclination is to bond, especially after you engage in some form of physical intimacy with them. Absolutely. Mate, anything else to add to that? turn the heater on but um (laughs) other than that i think that's about that's about it well keen to get your guys thoughts on the whole casual relationship discussion i mean it's one that you know we will keep coming back to because i think it's very prevalent and one where opinions are you know changing quite often as well and um that'll come as we keep navigating things as well so let us know what you think have you been in this situation how did it end up for you and what did you learn from it And um, yeah, we can't wait to, to hear from you guys. And on that note, guys, have a lovely rest of your week. See ya.